I can't think of another fish that has as many different common names as cobia. Crab eater, ling, black salmon, lemon fish, and cabio are just a few. The reason probably reflects three things. First, cobia are found around the world, so they're well known to lots of different cultures. The second is that it's such a great fish both to eat and catch. And third, their migration patterns are so well known to so many coastal residents. For many of us along the shores of the southeast United States, the spring cobia migration marks the beginning of another fishing season. Depending on where one is, the first sighting of cobia can almost be predicted to the day. Off Panama City Beach in Destin, Florida, for example, those first runs occur in the second or third week of March and continue through April. Cobia are usually in small schools and near to the surface, so they can be easily seen when the water is reasonably clear and calm. Sometimes there will be a loner, but usually they travel in groups of four to eight. The migration is a prelude to the summer spawning, and then individuals or small groups take up places where there's shade or structure. So during summer, around large sharks, turtles, manta rays, logs, or oil platforms are likely spots where they can be found. Where they go during fall is still a bit of a mystery, but most likely they head back south in deeper water. And they are so often a frustrating target. I've seen cobia hit an errant juice can that has fallen over, but at other times they refuse the most delectable live bait. And now there's more news about cobia. In recent years, both in the U.S. and elsewhere, people have learned how to rear cobia in mariculture environments. They have insatiable appetites and can grow to 20 pounds in less than two years. This may well have management implications, as cobia could be available to fish markets from mariculture operations, just as many salmon and other species are, thus lessening the pressure on the wild stock.